in a few weeks time I'll be going camping and in order to save some money I decided not to use the campsite's electrical supply but that gives me a little problem because I'm going to need some power to charge my phone maybe a laptop or this camera or you know some other small devices so I need a way to generate that power which is why I'm going to build a portable solar power setup At this point, you might be thinking, surely the setup you're about to build is not going to be cheaper than simply paying for electricity on the campsite. Now, that's true because this is going to cost about 100 euros, whereas paying for electrical service at the campsite is about 30. However, this setup can, of course, be used multiple times and it can also be used in a variety of other situations. So long term, this is going to be a better investment, or at least that's what I tell myself. Now, of course, the first thing we're going to need for a solar power system is a solar panel. So this right here is a solar panel that I've purchased. It's a small 30-watt uh, solar panel. It's nothing special. This is the kind of solar panel people sometimes uh, put on their boat or their motorhome or something like that. So perhaps you were thinking, why didn't you get a foldable solar panel to, for it to be even more portable, right? Well, the reality of it is, I don't think a foldable solar panel is all that useful at this kind of scale. Because the thing is, this panel is already quite small as it is, right? This can fit in the back of any vehicle. It could even fit into a large suitcase. And it doesn't take up that much space because, of course, it's very thin. So, for a solar panel this big, to me it doesn't really make a lot of sense to, to buy it in a foldable version, because then it would be way more expensive, and it doesn't make it that much more portable, because it's small anyway. So, right now what we need to do to make this usable, is we need to attach some kind of stand or some kind of foldable mechanism to this, so that you can put it up in a field easily. And also, we need to attach some wires so that we can connect it to our battery system later on. Okay, so the solar panel is now ready, so we've attached a foldable stand to it, so you can simply just pop this out, and then you can put it down like that, very nice. And of course we've also attached a cable. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need a way to actually store the energy from that solar panel. In other words, we're going to need to build some kind of battery pack. So I've bought eight of these lithium iron phosphate cells and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of those in parallel and then four of those sets in series which is going to give me a 14 volt battery with a capacity of about 90 watt hours or so which is capable of charging my phone about nine times. So it's going to be bigger than an ordinary power bank uh, but at the same time it's not going to be a massive battery.
All right, so we've ended up with a bunch of batteries with a couple of wires sticking out of it. Now, obviously, we can't use it like this. It needs to go inside a proper case to protect it from the elements. So therefore, I've bought this nice little box that everything can fit into. And we're not just going to put the batteries in here. We're also going to put in some electronics. So here's a wiring diagram that shows everything that we're going to put inside the box along with the batteries. First of all, we have a power switch that allows you to turn the thing on or off. We have a voltmeter that is going to show what the voltage of the battery is. It gives you kind of an indication of how full the battery is, right? Then we've also got a DC converter that is going to turn the 14 volts from our battery into 5 volts. And it's going to send that to a couple of USB ports so that you can plug your phone or some other, some other mobile device into it for charging. And finally, we've also got an Arduino and a relay module. Those are for disconnecting the solar panel uh, once the battery is fully charged. So what's going to happen is this Arduino is monitoring the battery's voltage through the sense wire over here. And once that voltage reaches a certain level, in other words, when the battery is fully charged, the Arduino is going to turn this relay off and it's going to disconnect the solar panel from the battery. Uh, so that prevents the battery from overcharging. So I'm going to put this diagram on my website so you can have a close look at it yourself, along with a couple of recommendations for some things you might want to change about this if you want to build this yourself. Um, so now without further ado, let's get started making this. <laughs> So now that the battery box is fully assembled, the solar power system is finally complete. And this is what it looks like. Now, I have to say I'm quite pleased with the result here because we've got a small solar panel that you can deploy very quickly in a couple of seconds, really. Uh, it plugs into this very convenient little battery box, which has a couple of USB ports on it that you can plug mobile devices into for charging. Um, it's also got a, a direct battery voltage output, which you can plug things into that need more power than a USB port can supply. So you can even plug in a 300 watt uh, inverter and you can actually use it to power small AC appliances, which I think is pretty impressive for such a small uh, setup. But that doesn't mean this thing is perfect. There is a lot of things about this that could be improved. 
Uh, first of all, the battery pack has no overcurrent protection. So if there is a short circuit or you draw too much power from this thing, you can actually damage the batteries. So it would be a good idea to install a little fuse in there to protect the batteries. And since the maximum charging current is a lot lower than the maximum discharging current, it would also be a good idea to install a separate fuse on the charging input as well. Although that's not really important in this case because we're charging it with a small solar panel and the solar panel can't supply nearly enough current to destroy this battery pack. So I think the solar panel can supply two amps or something like that. That's the maximum current it will ever supply. Uh, but the battery can easily handle being charged at 10 amps. So that's also the reason why there is no current limiting or current regulation uh, built into this system. It's because the, the current, the charging current, is already uh, inherently limited by the, the output capacity of the solar panel itself. Something else it doesn't have is over discharge protection. So right now it does have overcharge protection, so it turns the solar panel off when the battery is full. Uh, but it doesn't have the opposite. It doesn't turn off the output uh, when the battery is empty. So in theory, if you don't pay attention to the voltmeter and you keep discharging this battery box, you can actually damage or destroy the battery by entirely discharging it uh, to zero volts. So I know that to me this is not really an issue because I know that I keep an eye on that voltmeter, but if you want to prevent this, you could put another relay in there that turns off the output when the battery pack is empty. Uh, or perhaps you could just put in like a buzzer or some kind of alarm that goes off uh, when, when the battery is empty to notify you that you need to turn it off manually. So if you're going to build this, there is plenty of things to change and upgrade and improve. Uh, and if you decide to do so, I'd love to hear what you've done, you know, what kind of modifications you've made to, to improve my design, because obviously it's not quite perfect. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got for now, actually. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And of course, thank you for watching.